Well, good morning, everybody, or perhaps good afternoon or good evening if you're watching from outside the US. My name is Simon Phipps. I'm one of the founders at the Digital Insurer, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's Solutions uh, Spotlight webinar brought to you by the Digital Insurer and Strategy Meets Action. Today, we're focusing on how AI can be used to invigorate the document intake process in PNC. And we're delighted to be joined by one of the leading InsurTech solution providers in this space, Omnius, uh, along with one of the leading US carriers and clients of Omnius, and Trust Financial Services. So let's get things going um, and get, get a, a couple of formalities firstly out of the way. And uh, I'm not going to sort of uh, read out this disclaimer that's in front of us now, but I believe the layman's term for this disclaimer may be caveat emptor. So uh, I'll leave you to decide on that. Um, just flicking on a slide, please. I'll be opening today's uh, webinar. And as I said, I'm, I'm from the Digital Insurer, but Deb Smallwood, CEO and founder of Strategy Meets Action, uh, whom I'm sure many of you will already be aware of, will be moderating today's discussion. So I think in many ways, Deb's got the best job, really, because it's a great topic. We've got some excellent insights to share from Omnis and Antrust. Uh, before we get going, let's just get a couple of sort of housekeeping notes uh, behind this. And for those of you not familiar with Zoom, um, you'll see at the bottom of your screen, there's a couple of tabs, one for chat and one for Q&A. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on those throughout the discussion and trying to get to as interactive as we can in answering questions you may have as we go along. So please put your questions in the Q&A area and anything slightly broader in terms of observations in the chat area. Um, we'll be trying to get a bit of interaction. We'll be asking a question through the poll towards the end. Um, in terms of your sort of um, user experience, you can select in Zoom uh, to either view just the slides, slides and speaker or speaker only. So please play around with that. Uh, and I'm sure already you'll be wondering whether you're gonna get a copy of the the, the kind of recording and the slides afterwards and the answer to that is yes normally two or three days after the event we'll send a link out with those um, now i have to say personally i've been really looking forward to this discussion um, because actually it was about a year or so ago i was presenting at the machine learning conference in berlin that was sponsored by omnius and it was a great event uh, since then we've done actually a point of view on 21st century claims with both omnius and sma um, and you can take a look at that article if you haven't already seen it in, in the, uh, the link that we put into chat. Uh, so it's going to be, for me, a great opportunity to get a further insight really into how the Omnius team kind of work uh, with their clients and the story that they're building in the US. So, um, so just before I hand over to Deb, let's take a quick look at the agenda and um, just sort of let me explain how we're going to run this. So uh, Deb's going to set the scene with some sort of broader perspectives on this topic from SMA and some of the research they've done. Uh, and then we're going to move into a discussion uh, involving Omnius and Amtrust. And then we're going to pull out from that towards the end and take a slightly broader look at the Omnius solutions that are being pulled into the, the US market. Um, and then, of course, we'll create a bit of time for audience participation, Q&A, and uh, a call to action together with some sort of um, housekeeping notes and, uh, and one or two other updates from both SMA and TDI. Um, so with that positioning behind us, uh, this is a 60 minute webinar, so every minute counts. So it's really my pleasure now to pass on the baton to Deb, who's, who's waiting there um, to sort of pick up uh, the discussion and take it away. So Deb, maybe you can sort of, um, you know, kick the discussion off please with, with your opening remarks before introducing our panelists from Omnius and Amtrust. And welcome. Well, thank you, Simon, and hello, everyone. Thrilled, thrilled to be here. As, as Simon talked about, we have an amazing use case that we're going to be sharing with you. And I'm hoping that we all, the, the goal is really to shed a perspective, and I hope we can all learn from this. Uh, so let's, let's get started. I, I really want to just set the context to get you thinking about where we've been and where we are today and what the art of possible is and where we can go. So not to belabor the whole where, where we've been, but those that have grown up in the insurance industry, we were so paper ridden, right? And it was static evolution all around a paper driven workflow, paper coming in, paper going out and paper being used in the operations. And in the present moment, we, we have made strides and such great successes in terms of automating operations. So we have paperless, right? And we have all the scanning and the imaging, um, 
and we have paper fold, we have electronic folders in our operations, right? We've really automated that. In fact, we have a lot of automation with straight through processing. But when you look at where we are today as an industry, we still have a lot of paper coming into the mailroom, uh, paper for mostly claims and medical bill and legal, but we have other paper coming in as well. And we have a lot of paper going out. Um, this, this webinar is about the paper coming in. And what we've done over the last 10, 20 years is we've also layered us what I would call not automation, a lot of email and e-faxes coming in that either go to a generic mailbox or go to specific people in the operations. And so what we're gonna focus on is all that paper that is still coming in that we're imaging and scanning at an okay level using today's technology. When we think about the art of possible, next slide please, Natural language processing combined with the technologies that you're using can really create an innovative transformational state. Um, what it does is it not only streamlines your mailroom, but it also can read the emails and the e-faxes coming in. But it's what it's doing is really taking unstructured data that we still, those images that we still can't read today in creating structured data that then can be used for really transformation in the operations. So we get that efficiency and effectiveness in the mailroom and all the paper and the email coming in, but it can really bring our operations to the next level. Just real quick, quickly, next slide. So where are we on this journey? We're just started. As you can see, the brown is commercial lines and personal lines. A lot of companies want to fund these projects and they just can't get it to be prioritized. We're hoping that the excitement and what you can see and glean from this use case, you'll get funding, right? And we're about a third of the industry, they're either doing strategies or they're, they're piloting and rolling out implementation. So, um, Amtrust is a great example of someone that's in the orange that have implemented and we're excited to share the story. So let's, let's get started on the panel. We, as Simon said, we have Rupin and Ariel who are, are amazing thought leaders and leaderships um, positions in insurance. What I'd like to do is welcome you both and um, open it up for both of you to quick, 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 introduction, your, a little about your background, and answer the question, what gets you really excited about the art of possible of natural language processing? So Ariel, welcome, we'll start with you. Hi everyone, my name is Ariel Gorelick. I'm the Executive Vice President of Amtrust Financial Services. I'm the Group CIO and Head of uh, Group Operations for Amtrust, basically responsible for the entire IT value chain and group operation functions as uh, you know, policy admin, <clears throat> call center, print, premium audit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just as a background, Amtrust uh, Financial Services is a Fortune 500 PNC uh, carrier um, with operations in, in US and in Europe. And what gets me excited about you know, AI and, and, and NLP is the amount of potential use cases throughout the entire you know, insurance value chain that are possible. I mean, we just started with one which we will present here, but there are probably 20 other use cases that we're already thinking about. Great, well, welcome. And I love the fact that you wear two hats, right? You've got that IT and business really a conjoinment. So congratulations on, on your success in, in, your, in your, your buy role, right? And Rupin, how about the same? Hey, hi everyone. My name is Rupin Mago. Um, I've got a computer science background and I started coding solutions as, as I get, got out of school and within three years quickly realized that I wanted to spend more time with people and ended up working in different uh, startups and uh, I'm currently leading up our expansion at Omnius into the Americas. And what gets me excited about NLP and AI is the power of this combined with BPM and RPA and other technologies 
to really further the human spirit. So we're going to start to see new kinds of jobs opening up and new levels of success in our society, which really excites me. Super. So let's let's take that art of possible to the next level. Ariel, if, if we can start with you, um, you know, what and how can it really invigorate the, the industry? I mean, again, if you look at the background of the insurance industry, right, I mean, very conservative, legacy-based industry. And if you compare it to others like, you know, banks or even, you know, personal lines insurance, you know, the commercial, commercial insurance carriers are pretty much still what I call in, in a stone age and there's way to go. And, and, you know, when, when you look, you know, when you look into the, into the use cases, you know, what we can actually do, you, you quickly will realize that, you know, using AI, ML, you know, NLP, uh, you will be able not just to, um, you know, make your processes, you know, more, more efficient, but you can also start capturing revenue. Um, you know, and, and that's, I think, what, you know, many people do not think about it. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'll be happy to share later in the discussion, you know, how we started to capture revenue with Omnius solution as well on the insurance side. But again, a lot of legacy. And I think we're just, you know, scratching the surface here um, as, as commercial, you know, as a, as a part of a commercial um, insurance carriers here. I would agree. I, I, we are scratching the surface. This is the beginning. Rupin, um, the what and how? So I, I started talking about the combination of different technologies earlier. It's really leading us to machine intelligence. So taking these raw data points from unstructured and structured sources and building information and providing that to humans or a machine to make a decision or recommendations based on a variety of information. And I think that's the really cool thing that's about to happen is that machine intelligence piece. And, and maybe if I may add, Rupin, you know, to, to your point, again, if you look, um, if you look into the insurance industry, I think it's been 90% of it was driven uh, through M&A, right? At least in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. And M&A meant always that you would, you know, buy a company, quickly integrate it, and basically bolt on technology, existing technology solutions without proper architecting them. And that led to a lot of unstructured data, manual processes, paper trails, and, and, and now the insurance carriers are kind of stuck with this, right? And that's why where you see, you know, the AI, you know, NLP, the power of AI and power of NLP here that will help those, you know, insurance carriers to unwind that spaghetti picture and, and start, you know, in order to start using the data, the unstructured data that are there. Because all of us are sitting on huge amount of data, we just don't know how to use it, how to make it useful. Yeah, that's, um, I, 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 you know, we, we have spent the last 30, 40 years automating the process and the transaction and it's everything around it. And that's where the art of possible when we start to look at all that unstructured data that we didn't have the tools to really address it can really take us to the next level. So Ariel, why, 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 why are we still where we are? Why is there still so much paper? I mean, I think for number, and again, I don't claim to, you know, to, to, to know it all, but, you know, my opinion is that one, I mean, high complexity of processes, right? Again, that we, um, you know, that we lived through, you know, in the last 15, 20 years, and it's very difficult to kind of unwind it. Uh, and it's also very expensive, right? I mean, I know some insurance carriers that have 50 different policy administration systems, you know, 50 different backends, and that are kind of all bold, you know, bold together. So, so, so it's actually, it's just difficult, very expensive. And I think that there's also an element of habit, right? There's also an element of habit. And, you know, nobody wants to, nobody wants to steer, steer the pot. Right, you have your clients, you have the insurers, you have the brokers, you have the agents, and nobody wants to touch it because everyone, you know, when when times are great, you know, let's say before COVID, the you know the insurance market was going up, everything is great. Why, why, you know, why disturbing it? Why steering the pot? Now, you know, we are meeting the in the pandemic, and everyone is kind of scared of you know what's going to happen and how the insurance you know industry will react, and people are afraid to touch it again. 
right? Oh, you know, uh, we shouldn't touch it because nobody knows it in times of uncertainty. So, so, you know, habit and complexity, right? I mean, those are the two major reasons, again, in my, in, in my opinion. Rupin, do you have anything to add? What have you seen? I mean, from some of the stuff that we've seen, I mean, from a medical perspective, people still need to uh, regulate towards uh, HIPAA requirements. And HIPAA requires you to have a transmission that gives you a date and timestamp. And a lot of faxes still use because of this. So they're, they're going to e-fax, but it's still faxes might get printed out and then scanned and, and things like that. So it's just, it's just where the data is going and then regulations that are driving some of this. Okay, so let's let's get into the story. Let's dive into the antrust story. Um, Ariel, take us to the beginning. Talk about the idea, the sponsorship, the challenge. Um, walk walk us through the beginning. Um, it actually, started relatively simple. Um, I used to, I mean, I, I became a CIO of Amtrust uh, pretty much exactly three years ago, and, and it was all about technology, right? All about technology, you know, what do we do, how do we do, but I, I didn't have this, you know, the business insight. Um, and, and uh, you know, then one day, around 18 months ago, um, I became also the, the head of operations, you know, I got this business component, you know, the second hat, as, as you call it. Uh, and then I, I inherited a unit that was auto-indexing paper, right? I mean, all the medical files, all the claims files. And then all of a sudden, I started to stretch my hat and saying, like, why do we do this? I mean, aren't we in the 21st century? And, and, and then, uh, you know, uh, me and my team, you know, of architects and, and, and some operations people started to look into the into the process and we quickly realized that you know 50 percent of our claims documents you know medical documents in, in the workers comp area um, are, are still coming in as a hard mail right i mean around 50 i think 46 percent was the number around 40 14 percent we're still getting as a fax and then the rest is emails right and and you have the overall number of documents i think it's around 25 27 million documents a year just in that space and with big variety of documents and we said okay one second we, we can't go like that anymore <laughs> you know all of a sudden i had the pressure to optimize my cost base there you know the efficiency and we started to look for the solution and then lucky me or lucky rupin <laughs> we found each other um, and and uh, basically, we decided that we need a solution, and, and Omnius turned out to be that solution. We framed the project and said, "Hey, we our target was to get rid of 80%, around 80% manual workarounds in that in that space." And that's how I said, "Hey, let's quickly dive into it." I think we started last year. Nobody even was dreaming about COVID, but now we see the, the results. Um, we had a huge group, we had actually three groups of people uh, in California, in Florida, and in Atlanta uh, regions doing the manual, the manual indexing. And we said, hey, um, we, we don't want you to manually index and scan 27 million documents anymore. And that's how we got into it. Mm -hmm. And what was the role of the CEO? I mean, what, I, to me, it was like not a perfect storm, but a perfect success story, right? So a business executive that really understood the problem and the challenge um, found the right technology partner, which is it, not only it, it, but it was business led, you know, with the right technology, but the executive sponsorship. Could you talk a little about that? Yeah, I mean, it all started, you know, our, our CEO, Beer Ziskin, is a very visionary man. And he always, you know, ha hammers in to me and into my executive uh, board peers, uh, peers on the, on the executive board, just saying, hey, we are as much technology company as, as an insurance company. And, and how comes we have all those manual workarounds or manual processes and still deal with the, with the paper? So what we did a few years ago, we created an executive innovation board, right? Uh, consisting of number of executives and I'm part of that the innovation board. And we came up with the vision and the strategy saying basically, 
block our strategy is not to sprinkle in money in all kind of solution, but we wanted to create a toolbox, right? We, 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 had, it, we had a framework, which we call toolbox. Now we need to fill the toolbox with the tools, right? And those tools need to complement our core strategy and core business, right? I mean, if we are not in, I don't know, blockchain business, like why doing it or, or whatever it is, right? Whatever it might be. I mean, we are in a, you know, PNC, small commercial space, and how do we make our business better with AI, ML um, tools, right? And how do we fill that toolbox? Um, so, so he basically told me, hey, look, uh, we need to optimize not just me, basically the, exact, the, the entire executive board, we need to uh, make our business more efficient, we need to bring more business, uh, we need to optimize our processes and make it very, very easy to make business with Amtrust through technology. Um, and and that's, how, that's how it all started, right? And we started to look for all kind of solutions. And that was a big lesson learned for me in the beginning, as I observe also some of our competitors, there are some models that are saying, hey, just take the money and sprinkle it in, right? And just just, just invest into whatever comes your way and see what works. Mm -hmm. um, we made, I mean, consciously, we decided to go for another solution. We said, hey, first define the problem and then find the technology that works for you. And that's how it all, that's how it all started, right? We hired you know, a few scouts in Europe and here and that went out. And, and started to look for the solutions that where we said we need those solutions for the business. And that's one of our scouts found actually Rupin or got introduced to Rupin in one of those insure tech shows. I'm not exactly sure uh, when and how it happened, but I think it was in Europe somewhere. And, and then they brought us the, the solution and we said, hey, interesting, let's try it out. And we did a POC. Uh, I mean, usually when we engage with all kind of insure techs or startups or new technologies, we always do a POC. Um, and it was extremely successful. I mean, they did a POC on claims, on all of our claims documents and came back and said the accuracy of those documents, right? Uh, through the AI model came, you know, in above 90%. And I was very impressive. And that's how it's all kind of, you know, we started to push and then again I, I got I became you know CEO of this company and started to face some real challenges and real life problems right with our processes and unstructured data and 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 I said okay this this is a perfect solution for for that right on the on the back office stuff right indexing but you know one more exciting story to it as we started to work with the Omnias and, and get our efficiencies in place. We, I mentioned to you in the beginning of the call, you know, we started to think, how do we capture revenue? How, how do we create revenue with this? And, and you know, if, if you know, um, in, in the United States, most of the agents and brokers are using Accord 130 form. I mean, this is like a typical intake for business. This is how agents submit business to insurance and uh, commercial insurance carriers. And, basically PDF or handwritten form that, that those agents submit to, to us. And then we retype them right into our front ends. And, and now with Omnius solution, um, we basically deployed that NLP model and those accord forms and we don't have to retype it. I mean, it usually takes agents just a few seconds to submit business to us just by dragging and dropping you know, the PDF. And that's how we started on top of the, all the efficiencies we started to capture revenue. I mean, we already produced double digit, you know, in millions of dollars of uh, gross written premium, new business for us, just through this technology. Amazing. I hope that answers <laughs> your question. Yeah, and, and what I love is it, it was from the concept, right? It all started, you defined the problem, you looked for the technology. It wasn't a technology looking for a problem. Um, you know, really great, from the start, right? I love, I love hearing this story. I think we can go to business. What I'd like to do is take the conversation. So we talked about the launch. Let's talk about the outcomes, the business outcomes, and then we can talk about executing barriers, lesson learned. But let's, let's fast forward and go to the, and you started to talk about the revenue um, area around the impact to the business and some of the financial metrics. Yeah. So, I'm a big believer uh, of execution because in, in, 
you know, and I'm sure many of the participants of the, uh, you know, on, on this uh, session and you guys in Rupin know, I mean, there are thousands and, and hundreds and thousands of insure techs and fit techs and startups, and there are a lot of brilliant, brilliant people out there, right? But I, I get bombarded every day uh, through LinkedIn, through my mail, through my cell phone, with, with idea, you know, new ideas and new technology solutions. And how do you, I mean, how do you decide, you know, what technology, what solution to go with? Um, and, uh, you know, so, so again, many brilliant ideas, but what it comes down to is the execution, right? I, I've seen some examples, unfortunately, I've seen, su you know, such examples where we believed, hey, there was a brilliant idea and the people that came up with the idea were also like brilliant genius people. And it was something new and unique to the market. But when you got into execution, you kind of started to see the gaps. You know, some, some of those insure techs and fintechs are not mature enough. Um, sometimes, you know, the carriers are not ready to interact with those, you know, smaller companies. You know, you, you, as I say, you know, big ships, you know, turn, turn very slow. <laughs> so, um, you know, so we, 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 the, the key to the business outcome, and I'll talk to it in a second, is rigorous planning uh, and in, in, in planning of that execution. That's what we did, you know, that's what we did together. And just, you know, fast forward to the business outcomes, what we did, I mean, we got a significant ROI results in a little bit longer than, than four months, right? When we, when we started the project, we went live, I, I, I wanna say maybe six months and I'm not sure, Ruben, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was around six months in, um, you know, at the goal live, we had 34% of automation. So remember the number I, I threw at you at the beginning of the session, 27 million documents. So 34% of those 27 million documents got automated from the get-go, okay? And then very important to keep in mind, everything is a duration, right? There's nothing, and there's, there's no magic to it. Um, and, and we started to iterate, and after 30 days, we got to 56% mark. Um, and then we are right now at 75% of automation of our, so basically 75% of 27 million documents, claims intake documents. And I'm talking about legal documents, doctor's notices, prescriptions. I mean, you name it all, there are probably a few hundred different types of documents are not being touched today, right? With only 1%, you know, I think it's 0 0.01 error rate. Okay, big business outcome to me is also that previously we didn't even know the real error rate, right? I mean, it's always a discussion like how good do you do? Because, you know, when, when we went live, I had a few people that didn't believe into our results. Um, you know, some, some peers that were doubt, doubting um, the results of this project and they kept asking me, what's your error rate? And I told them, hey, that's below 1%. But my question back to them was, when before we went live, I mean, what was the error rate? That was silence because nobody knew, right? So we got a clear ROI. We automated 75% of 27 million documents that are not being touched anymore, right? The accuracy of the, of the documents recognition is around 90% right now, and we are below 1% of error rate. And I think what drives me more than this is that Again, we talked about unstructured data. Now with this solution, I'm, I'm, I'm extracting all the data that I need. And, you know, I can only fantasize how I can be using my data going forward, you know, from an actuarial and claims perspective and data analytics perspective going, going forward. Um, and, and maybe just to, to finish with a few more points on this, you know, it was also another one more um, result, you know, from, and it made me um, feel very good about this as a CIO, we, for many, many years, we were using two document management systems, one proprietary and one external vended solution. And, and I was in that situation of habit. Nobody wanted to touch it, right? Nobody, everyone is afraid to touch, you know, two systems, what impact it will have to the business, to the processes, to the agents, and how long it will take us. But when Omnius engaged with us, it became very, very clear, um, we will have to go through two 
integrations. If we have to stay on two document management systems, we have to go through two integrations. And I said, there is no way I'm going through two integrations. I will do only one integration. That forced me to make a very painful and difficult decision to get rid of one of the document management systems and just stick with us. And, and as a result of this project, we are you know, decommissioning our second document management system, which is a big you know, relief on the expense side, but also it reduced our complexity, huge time. I mean, big time, big time. I mean, you went from two systems that have been around here, around here for 15 years. Now, you know, just, just through this project we got, we ended up with one. So that, that made me feel good, you know, as a CIO, and I'm sure my head of enterprise architect, architecture is happy about it too. Mm -hmm. So Rupin, why don't, why don't you add a little more to the business outcome from your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Brooke, if you want to bring up that slide, um, this will this will share just the numbers that Ariel already went through, but you can see how things progressed over time. Um, and so, you know, we started at that 34% and it was iterations on both sides, right? We were helping to further develop the machine learning mod models to get smarter with more and more incoming data. But then there was also automation on the back end that, that we were also helping the Amtrust team with. And so there was there was growing and learning from both sides. I think um, you know we we at on the Omnia side we're learning about enterprise IT and and how this fits in, um, and on the Amtrust side working with AI technologies and machine learning. So this this gives you uh, that piece of it, and and it was an exciting journey, and and that's how we need to look at these things with AI is is, is it being a journey. So Rupin, um, so is this is is this what people should expect? Um, hard question, right, for business outcomes, because this, this was everything. It was revenue, ROI, decommissioning legacy, automation, optimization, a journey, right? Is this, is this typical? It, the iterations are going to be typical. The starting point might be different, right? We learned a lot through this that we can, for the next clients, do a better job of pre-planning, and, and that'll come out when we talk about some of the learnings mm -hmm. that we've had through all of this. Uh, but the iterative approach is definitely something that should be expected by everyone. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a new concept that we as an industry, typically we launch a project and we have a day one or a day two and we're done. What I'm finding when, if you really want to transform and really create innovation, it's a journey, it's an evolution, and you can continue to improve. It, it's not just slapping the technology and you're done. Would you both agree? Absolutely. Uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's business, you know, issues of problem first, you know, technology second. Again, it's technology is a toolbox to me, right? Exactly. I mean, one of the tools in, 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 in that toolbox, and, but you need, to, you need to know what problem you're solving for, that there is a very crisp, you know, business case in ROI about it, and then you apply the, the solution mm -hmm. to that. So let's dive, so uh, amazing successes, right? So let's dive into the, and Ariel, you, you mentioned this, the execution, and Rupin, you did too, the execution and the planning. Could you walk us through what needed to get done, scoping, um, and analyzing the forms, all the execution of the project? Um, Rupin, why, why don't you go ahead? I will let Rupin go. Rupin, all sure. yours. Sure. So yeah, like, like Ariel said, we, we were looking at a six month timeline for the project. And, you know, we, we started out with certain goals and how we thought it was all going to happen. And, and we had to iterate through even just that, right? Modifying things and, and making adjustments where necessary. Um, understanding that, you know, because Ariel, as he was talking about, you know, you're bringing a bunch of companies together for the past 10 years, you've kept some of that dirty data around how can we cleanse it so that we're not replicating everything that's happening today, but set it up for the go forward success. And so there were iterations to identify some of those redundancies. And then, you know, the dirty data, it's everywhere, especially when you talk about unstructured information. And it was figuring out what is dirty and what can be cleansed to make it useful and impactful inside of inside of Amtrust was was also a key, key piece of that. 
and and you know the collaboration was was one of the most critical pieces of executing this project right we're we're a startup and amtrust is an enterprise fortune 500 organization and so we we had to learn how to collaborate with each other uh, for that mutual success and it really became all about a partnership ariel what, what about what are your thoughts on that I mean, I, I agree. I think you, you hit, you, you hit the, the nail on the head, but you know, it's, we started in one place, right? And I think both parties realized that there is more to it, right? I mean, again, speaking of the habit that I mentioned in the beginning, um, very quickly we identified uh, or, or, you know, <laughs> discovered, you know, the, 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 the band-aids, right, the red tapes, you know, and the processes and the redundancies in the processes, redundancies in the document types that have been handled like that for the last, I don't know, 10-15 years, nobody ever asked questions. We, we basically started to, very quickly into the process, we started to question, to, you know, question the status quo or challenge the status quo. Um, and then we had to stay agile and, and, and flexible in that in, you know, entire process um, so, so that you know, we could quickly adjust um, our processes, you know, core insurance processes, but also Omnis was learning from the process um, how this, the actual claims intake, intake is happening here in US um, so that they could also adjust their models on, on, on their end. So let's, let's talk through the barriers and challenges. I think we touched a little upon culture. Um, Ariel, if, if you could just um, tell us about the barriers and challenges, because this requires new thinking, and then Rupin, like to hear your perspective as well. Yeah, I, I think, you know, there are two angles, two angles to the barriers and challenges. You know, one big one, as you just mentioned, is the culture, right? You have... You have the Goliath, right? It's like a typical Goliath and a David story, right? You have a huge, you know, again, Fortune 500 insurance company with its culture and processes um, and habits. Um, and, and you have an insure tech, right? I mean, it's somewhat established, but still it is an insure tech. Um, and, and, you know, one of the bigger, biggest challenges in the beginning was, was the culture and being able to adjust to each other. Right and and be open minded. You have this you know huge shape in a small boat. The trying to you know sail together. Um, so that's something that we had to overcome. And and you know and, and there are a number of topics around this you know that that angle. Um, and I think the second angle was more of a technical um, nature. I'm sure Rupin will talk to it. But you know it's all about quality. If you're still getting your faxes or e-faxes or 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 hard mails, I mean talking about handwritten notices from doctors and, and and you know doctors are not known for for a very you know pretty handwriting um you know we are in 21st century but you know believe it or not there's still people that are writing you know with a hand you know use the handwriting on on documents and and how you know how do you deal with that um so that that was a challenge you know how do you scan what do you you know what equipment do you use you know for for scans and type of paper and documents. I mean, th those are the biggest challenges and, and barriers, but I'm happy that, you know, we solve for, for all of that. Mm -hmm. Open? Yeah, I mean, just, just on the cultural aspect, you know, one of the biggest things with AI and technology like this is change management. And, and what I thought Amtrust did really well was get the people in the room, train them. We performed training. They did a lot of in-house work to help people understand what we're embarking on because that's a critical component in, in all of this. And, and as Ariel said, there are technical issues where when you're talking about unstructured data, there's going to be data quality issues, but that shouldn't stop you from moving forward. The goal can't be 100% automation in this, but getting into the 80s and 90s is possible. And it's just through that iterative approach of, of getting there. Right. It, it was teamwork. I mean, there are a couple of components, right? Just to add to it. I mean, one is you need a very good project management, right? You, you need accountability and responsibility with all the stakeholders. We had a dedicated solution architect on, on this project who, you know, and we had dedicated delivery managers on the de development side. Right, and, and they knew it's a dual die type of exercise. There was an accountability. It's not one of those exercises. Hey, let's let's see if we get somewhere. We, we had a very specific business case, and I wanted 
my ROI back. <laughs> so I said, guys, like do whatever. Like you, you can tell them it's not working, but you know, let's stop it early in the process. But ideally, let's make it happen. And, and it was accountability, and it was a professional project, you know, and uh, project management and, and architects on this, and, and we made it happen. And, and we had to adjust to each other culture. Mm -hmm. I would agree. I think culture, we are, we're still trying to solve the paper in the mailroom with traditional technology of OCR. And you really have to flip the lens and think of the possibility. Because what I've heard from insurers is, ah, it just doesn't work. You know, poor quality, poor scanning, poor this, poor that. I, I think we open it up and, and try to eliminate those, those barriers and think of um, this, te this technology is pretty powerful. So let's shift to Rupin. Um, lead us off with lessons learned. How would you summarize the lessons learned? So for us, being a technology provider, one of the lessons learned was, especially when you're talking about data extraction type capabilities, we were, we were really proud of you know, the confidence levels of all these things. But when you're talking to a, a large company, it's great that you have these great confidence ratings, but if they can't automate in the back end, it means nothing. And so it, it quickly changed in our minds that it was interesting, the confidence levels are so good, but how do we drive the automation in the back end? And that became the key success area that we needed to focus on, which might have been different at the start of the project when, when we first entered it. Um, and then our, our understanding of the insurance space is growing, right? We understand the claims documents a lot better and, and being able to see that just matching one data field isn't enough. It needs to be a broader scope and we need to make sure that it's, it's, it's made out for complete success instead of uh, tying things to the wrong, wrong pieces of data in the system. Um. I'm sorry, Ariel, lessons learned. Um, yeah, I, I think already mentioned this, um, you know, uh, throughout this call, um, lessons learned, have a very crisp business case and, and problem that you, and, and know the problem you want to solve, right? Be very open-minded uh, and, and flexible. And it is okay not to know every single detail in the beginning of the project just be ready to you know to 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 iterate be agile and flexible throughout the process it is for sure you know you will always find something that you didn't plan for or didn't know of be it on the process technology or whatever and be ready to make you know make a decision on the fly you know solid decision but you know somewhat fast don't sit on solution for years until you start you know implementing it go in when you have a business case and an idea go in and and if you know whether where, where there is a will there is a way i would agree uh rupin any any closing thoughts on lessons learned yeah just just to add to that ariel i think um understanding what you wanted as an executive leader making sure that we understood what the project team wanted, that was all critical for our success as well, right? So we had our regular touch points and, and I think that helped uh, considerably in the execution of this project. It, your leadership really went a long way here. Thank you. So let's, let's I, we're, I'm looking at the questions coming in and there's a lot of questions for Omnius. And so I think it's a great segue into going into Rupin um, going into the spotlight and taking a couple of minutes and walking us through your company and your solution. All yours. Ab absolutely. Thanks, Deb. So um, here's a, uh, some information. I'm, I'm more of a storyteller, so I'll, show, I'll share a story of how Omnius has gotten to this point. Our CEO, Sophie, she started a company in the early 2000s that did robotic book automation. And what I mean by that is the team would take handwritten manuscripts and handwritten books, put it in this glass enclosure that would scan the text on the page, turn the pages and continue to scan the text and digitize all of this information. Fast forward to about 2015, the team looked at that technology and said, how do we apply this to the private sector? How do we not just look at handwriting, but look at type text? And how do we get into documents and start reading and understanding this? And, and a decision had to be made at that point. Do, do they go rules and template based, which already exist in the market, or do they go pure machine learning? And they made the fortunate decision of going pure machine learning with, with that technology. 
And we built out a platform and, and we're working with different verticals. And in 2016, we said, no, we, we really need to focus on one vertical where we want to go deep and not just do this intake piece. That's a critical component to get access to data, but it was all about automating business processes and how can we use that data to do something more with it. And Brooke, if you could change to the next slide. And this is, this is how we look at our solution set. We're not trying to be another end-to-end -end system or another core system. You already have a lot of those. What we're helping with is through a modular approach. Starting, starting by first, the cognitive information processing, which is what we've been talking about here, that intake piece, understanding the incoming information from a variety of set, being able to classify that and, and extract the data from it. The next step is to start to put in some machine intelligence of some of those data intense paths. If people are looking up different values in different systems, can that all be aggregated into one? And using machine intelligence to say, as an example, there might be a first notice of loss that comes in that says somebody, somebody says my bike was stolen. Can we use machines to translate that into property theft um, as, as what it would read inside of a policy or terms and conditions? That's that machine intelligence piece. And what we're driving to is getting to the AI powered decisions or recommendations on next steps. Decisions can be made for certain processes, but recommendations will help humans really look at all the data that's available in various systems and be able to make a, a more intelligent decision as a next step for, for those processes. And, and when we talk about the results with this type of technology, it's got to have at least 70% automation within workflows. It's going to help with the optimization of resources and skills, and it's going to reduce your operational costs. And that's, that's what we're focused on in Omnius. It is insurance focused and we're very proud to have a customer like Amtrust. Over back to you, Deb. Thank you, Rupin. I think now is a good time to um, pull up the poll. If you'd like, if you're interested in learning more from Omnius and continuing the conversation with Rupin, uh, you can you can answer this poll and we're gonna we're gonna go into the QA right now. Um, there's an amazing amount of questions. I've done webinars for so many years and wow, this has really stirred some really great questions. Um, the, the one, there's, there's a lot of questions around like what percent of successful process documents are unstructured data, no fixed forms? Like roughly. Anyone got that? Ariel or Rupin? I, you know, people are trying to understand the unstructured, the accuracy of like handwritten documents and things like that. Sure. So I think, um, you know, just high level numbers in terms of structured forms that are coming in, Ariel, I would say like maybe five to 10%, but the rest would be unstructured. We're talking about medical bills. You're talking about legal attorney. You're talking about emails that just have correspondence information in them. Um, so it's probably on the lower side in terms of structured forms, state forms, as an example. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I would agree. Ninety-five. I would say ninety to ninety-five percent is unstructured. Wow. <laughs> so it's well, it's like when I hear this story, I, I just sit back and I go, "Wow, right? That was always the the barrier that we wouldn't be able to do it." Um, does the system run independently, independently of any claims management system or reporting systems? Rupin, you want to take that one? Absolutely. So, yeah, we, we built a agnostic approach to our platform where we can connect into any system. It doesn't matter if you have APIs, you can use RPA, you can use BPM technologies, whatever's available. Um, we've kept this completely agnostic. Right. In, in our specific example, it's, you know, there's a model and we uh, basically talk through the APIs back and forth between the system and our document management system. And then the document management system is talking to the claim system mm -hmm. or policy admin system. Okay. Here's, here's one. Um, what kind of readiness Amtrust had to do before engaging with Omnius? Um, We've been always ready. Um, I mean, there's nothing like, like, look, there's no silver bullet and, and, and there is, I didn't have the wand or there's no magic to it, right? Again, it's business as usual, it, it, you know, again, idea, 
business case execution, right? Whether it's omnis or not omnis, or that, that there's no, you can never be ready if you, if you feel like you're not ready. Just jump into it. If you have those few ingredients that I mentioned, jump into it and be, be ready to iterate. Um, so we didn't have, I, I, I want to say we were ready because uh, mm -hmm. we were ready to learn on, in the process. And Rupin, what, what do you look for in a client if they're ready? Uh, having a defined business case, right? Um, you know, it, it, as an insure tech player, you know, we, we want to work with organizations that are looking to do something into production, right? There's lots of people that want to try things out and see what's available and we want to help, but we also really focus ourselves on who wants to put things into production. It's that execution piece that Aria was talking about before. Uh, great. Uh, there are some questions. So the scope of this conversation was around claims in the mailroom and the medical and the legal and the claims documents coming in. Ariel, at the beginning, you said there's many, many use cases. That's what gets you excited. There's some questions around loss runs. There's some questions around the intake, the emails that we're getting um, still from brokers and agents. Um, is, what's, what's next on the docket, Ariel? Um, what do you think I mean, about those possibilities? Yeah, I, I, I think loss runs is a separate topic. I think we can have another webinar for a couple hours just on loss runs. I think it's a, it's a very known issue in the insurance industry, at least here in, in United States, and nobody has figured it out yet, right? I mean, I actually have a call later today on uh, loss runs through APIs, and I don't know if it, there's a case, but there's, there's no real solution there yet. Can Omnius be used for some of the loss runs, yes, but you know, then you will have to uh, deal with, you know, I, I don't even know how many variations, like every insurance company, you know, provides its own format, you know, for loss runs, right? And then, and then you see all kinds of permutations along the way through the brokers and agents and, and you know, manual, in, you know, uh, manipulations. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but, you know, what, what gets me excited is, again, how do you, use Omnius or Omnius-like solutions um, in, in, the, in the revenue stream, right? You know, I mentioned to you, how do you capture that revenue? Mm -hmm. How do you take those accord forms, right? Or submission, you know, packets, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, all of them have more or less same type of data. And how do you apply the, the, the uh, AI ML to this to convert it to into the revenue and that's what we do together right i mean uh, we capture those accord forms and we we connected it to our policy admin api and within seconds we extract the data and re return back to the brokers the quote right and saying hey your workers comp quote is i don't know 300 dollars 500 whatever the number is that's kind of you know what's on the docket for us and then and then the next case is where you can apply it um, is uh, in the cash accounting, right? Where you deal with a lot of invoices and, and checks and, and you know, uh, cases like that. Mm -hmm. Rupin, you wanna comment? Yeah, absolutely. So just on the, on the loss runs, we did execute a POC um, a couple months ago uh, where we looked at a variety and, and it's true. There, there's so many different ways that these loss run statements come in. Um, and on that POC, we did achieve 80% accuracy on what the data was required in order to move that forward for underwriters. So uh, we've got experience doing that. And, and, and you know, th we're looking at submission packets as an example, classifying each one of those documents um, and then doing extractions, whether there's a court forms or loss run statements that are coming in through that. Great, as, as everyone can hear, right? The possibilities are endless. Um, we still have a lot of emails and PDFs coming in uh, for submissions, There's especially for commercial lines. Um, let's, let's end the conversation with, I, I love words of wisdom or closing remarks. So in 10 words or less, um, what would be the key takeaway that you would wanna share with the audience today? Um, Rupin, we'll go with you. Okay, um, for me, it's AI is a journey, not a project. Cool, Ariel? Um, and I would just generalize that. I would say be open-minded and don't be afraid to, to jump into it, into AI ML. Love it. 
All right, so let's let's go to the call to action. Thank you so much, Ariel and Rupin. Um, you shared some really great um, insights and some really great perspective and hopefully everyone can learn from this and want to continue the conversation. The call to action just really quickly. Next slide, please. Um, you know, I, it, at the end of the day, the, um, the story really demonstrated the art of possible of natural language process and, and really reminded us the power of business led technology enabled transformation, right? So my call to action to all of you is what's your transformational story using this technology? Um, if you think out in a year or three years and you think about being on a webinar like this, how would you like your story to play out? So that's the, the call to action I challenge all insurers to really embrace natural language processing, continuing the conversation with Omnius and, um, and to really learn from this as well. Simon, great, great place to hand off to you. Yeah, Deb, thank you. Um, what a great conversation. You know, I was just reflecting on that whole discussion and enjoying it very much. And, you know, we see a lot of insurtechs out there. And um, the thing that makes or breaks them, I think, is the ones that are focusing not just on the what, but the how. And if you read the article I mentioned earlier on 21st century claims, you'll, you'll see that, you know, declare our hand. You know, we love on this because I think they really get the importance of working with the insurer, you know, kind of opportunity or use case by use case to demonstrate ROI and kind of, you know, changing and, and um, tacking as you go along, working with the client, I think, to sort of uh, make sure that, that the what is appropriately deployed to get that ROI through. So, yeah, great discussion. And uh, thanks to both of you. Um, we hope you've enjoyed today. Um, please give us a bit of feedback because that's the way we keep improving. You can do that one of three ways. Either there'll be a quick prompt at the end of this uh, webinar now. We'll send you a link to the recording in a few days. You'll get an opportunity then. Or you can just reach out to either myself, Deb, or, or um, Ariel. Or, or Rupin will we'll share their details in a second. So please do that. Um, and while I'm on, just for, uh, just for a couple of minutes more, just firstly, just to share that we will be extending the discussion around how Omnius more broadly is helping insurers to kind of transform, I guess, their businesses through the deployment of AI process by process, function by function. It's a closed door invitation only event that'll be held on November the 12th, 11 a.m. EST. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and next slide, please. Um, pleased also to announce that we'll be, we'll be kicking off our broader Insights to Solutions series again. Some of you may remember we had one um, through the summer. The winter series starts in December with a focused discussion on digital distribution. Then we've got January on digital claims and February on digital underwriting. So um, the dates are there and please make a note of them. And I'm sure there'll be really good discussions. Um, so really without further ado, it just leaves me to say, um, a big thanks to everybody. Um, Ariel, a huge thanks, and Rupin also. I think it's been a really authentic discussion, and uh, I'm sure everybody on the call has enjoyed it. Um, Deb, thank you very much for so sort of eloquently navigating the discussion. I think it was a really rich one and uh, really enjoyed it, as I said. Most importantly, a big thanks to all our listeners um, around the US and perhaps more widely. Uh, we hope you found it to be a good investment of your time. We appreciate that time is money. Um, and I think we're actually going to finish this discussion one minute early based on my clock uh, we've had a great attendance today uh, we're going to give you back a, a minute of your day and uh, without further ado we'll close the discussion here so thanks everybody once again and enjoy the rest of the day thank you thanks everyone Bye -bye.